What's that? How you guys doing today is Mike. I'm back at it again with another Citizen Cinema. I'm here with a very special guest, Peter Kwong, one of my childhood, one of my, is one of my favorite characters from my childhood. Uh, we met before uh, last year. That's right. And then, and it's just, I, I actually, I'm just a little just trying to try to be starstruck, but I got him on camera right now. How you doing today? I'm doing great, Mike. How are you? Well, I'm better now that you're here. <laughs> anyway, it's really a pleasure to enjoy your company and have this nice little interview. Thank you. And uh, we'll talk about Big Trouble in Little China. China. Yeah. So uh, basically, how, how does it feel after all these years to see how it still resonates with fans? You know, I think um, back in the day when this was made, um, it wasn't a box office success. But what was nice about it, it incorporated not only the cast and crew in its creativity, but John Carpenter, the director, really wanted to embody the positive aspects of all the elements within the community, the Chinese community, yeah. with the historical aspects, the comedy. And what it was was really a, uh, Kurt Russell was playing more the sidekick in reality than, and, and it was Dennis Dunn yeah. under the, the character Wang Chi was playing you know, the lead. And so here we had elements of evil versus good and it had elements of magic and monsters romance. and romance and everything. So it was uh, quite, quite, uh, quite, quite the show. But what was really interesting about it, yeah. when I first did the movie, I didn't know it was a comedy. Really? I was, you know, when you're doing a big production, it's one of those, you're given only the information that you really need. Yeah. So I auditioned originally for, for one of the martial arts roles. But when John Carpenter saw me, he said, you know, I have a special place for you. And I'm gonna so he made me one of the storms. And, and as a storm, uh, Rain. I had the character Rain. I had to fight Dennis Dunn. But I didn't know it was a comedy. So I went into that last fight scene full on angry and ready to kill. Kick, punch, kill. Yeah. And then at the very end, he raises his eyebrows. I'm going, what the heck? This guy's, you know, laughing right yeah. in the middle of this serious fight scene yeah. until you see it at the very end all put together. So when you look at the film again, I know you will, Hell yeah. that uh, you'll see my true reactions going in shock that that would happen. So it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun on that movie. So versus when you shot it to now, how do you think the industry's changed when it comes to representation? Well, I can go across the board because I've always been an advocate for equal rights, fair play. I mean, I'm, I'm an all-American kid. Yeah. Truth, justice, and the American way. But in the truest sense of the word, meaning that there's equality for all and there is equal opportunity. But we know in life that's not the case. Unfortunately. And we know in life things ebb and flow, and so things aren't fair. But I still do my best to make things fair. That's one, one of the reasons why... Uh, as an actor, I also became an advocate. And to understand the functioning of our film and television industry, yeah. I decided to do an investigation on how the system works, yeah. about governance. And so be I ran for board of, first of all, jo joined all the committees at Screen Actors Guild really? and AFTRA, okay. and then became a board of directors for over 10 years, national board, wow. and became a national board member of AFTRA as well, American Federation of Television Radio Artists. And then later on, I evolved into the Motion Picture Academy, the Oscars, and the Television Academy, the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, the Emmys. Yeah. And I later evolved into becoming a governor for the Performers Peer Group. Yeah. Every uh, organization, such as the uh, Oscars and the Emmys, they have different, uh, in the Oscars, they have branches. Yes. Writers, directors, producers, directors. In the Emmys, they have peer groups, performers, hair, makeup, things like that. Yeah. So I became a part of that and become, uh, becoming part of the system that evolves change from within mm -hmm. and not without because I believe in evolutionary change and not 
revolutionary change. Ooh, I like that, bro. But it is, it is it's all part of change because you want things right. And yeah. there is a definitive right and wrong in life. And you have to know the difference. And that's why when you become a martial artist, it sets you on your path of knowing what is right. It's not, it's not just an opinion. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's a lot of people, uh, when they grow up, they're misconceived. It's like, I think this way, I think this way. And, and then they find it. And then you don't even know what the truth is. Yeah. So please forgive my no, getting man. philosophical, but that is part of that's what I one of the hear. reasons why I get into show business in the first place is because of this face. When I communicate with one person on a one-on-one -on -one basis, yeah. I can change your heart, I can change the world. But if I talk to you in the media, it's like one face, one moment in time, touches thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people for a lifetime. So this moment in film is forever. Yeah. So make it count. Make your intention known throughout the universe. Speaking of comedies, yes. I, you, you know I had to bring it up. What was like working on Cooties with uh, with everybody with uh, Rain Wilson? Funny enough, Rain. What do you mean? What? 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 are you talking about? Comedy? That was dead serious. I'm gonna. I, we had to kill these little bratty kids that turned into zombies, and you know that that had the Cooties, and we had to knock them off them because they were like biting people, and turning. Was like a little cathartic. <laughs> 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 Man, these, these little brats, you know. Yeah, I think yeah. especially like with, with you being in that film, that thing it changed how it changed like another aspect of the zombie genre. Because as a filmmaker and as someone who, who does interviews, I've seen the zombie genre being changed and like redone and reinvented all the time. But with you guys, it's like you set the mark where you can bring kids into the zombie genre in a whole new light. And now they're doing another one, but not cooties. It's a new one called Little Monsters about a teacher protecting her kids from the zombie apocalypse. I have no idea. You see, I didn't know there was such a subculture with the yeah. zombies. It's with Lupita Nyong'o and Josh Gad. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so I... I so, yes, it was an honor to yeah. work among like eight amazing comedians, yeah. you know? And, 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 and I didn't know at the time that Elijah Wood was such a yeah. horror fanatic and, and yeah. made films of the ilk. And, and so, because I was, always knew him from, you know, his original that made him through the roof, right? Yeah. So, yes, I, I enjoy comedy. Yeah. I, we do have a sense of humor, you know. All the time, guys. Why I oughta? Exactly no. right. No, 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 no. Yeah. Get up. Woo, 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 woo. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. See? It's, that's big trouble in China, right? All day. Big trouble All in day. Burbank today. <laughs> my man, my gangster dude. My boy right here, yeah. Peter, dog. Oh, hold on. Bring it right there. Hold on. What y'all want to do? Okay. Boom. Anyway, guys. All right. I, I it's been real. Short because Peter has to go back. Anyway, I just want to say thank you guys for tuning in today. And Peter, where can people look at your current work inside and outside of film? And where can they follow you on? Uh, let's see. On um, Facebook, I think it's PK Pickgram. No, that's that's uh, Instagram. That's, yeah. that's PK Pickgram. P I C. Okay. Right. And then on, uh, I just look me up on. I'm the only one that looks like me with the picture, you know. And then, and then, and in my background, you'll see my um, uh, big trouble little China pose, cartoon style with the double swords. Yeah. So y'all take care. It's your boy Mike Fallon. Mike. Peter Paul.